Today we'll be covering two related topics, how to set and use your RV's mirrors and how to maintain good lane position. We've all seen this cautionary note on the right side view mirror on most cars. It's warning us that the mirror is slightly curved or convex. The curved glass expands the field of view, allowing us to see a larger area. But squeezing that wider viewing area onto the small surface of the mirror makes everything appear smaller, which can signal your brain that things are further away than they really are. Large vehicles are too big for one mirror to effectively cover so much area. So trucks, buses, and RVs use two mirrors, one perfectly flat and the other even more convex than the one on your car, which of course makes things appear even smaller. The two mirrors need to be used together as a team, as neither one can do the entire job on its own. Keep in mind, that both flat and convex mirrors come in various shapes and sizes. While many convex mirrors are round, ours are rectangular. Once you know how to adjust and use them, they all work the same way. Let's start by talking about proper adjustment technique, and then we'll explain how to use them once they're adjusted correctly. Move the flat mirror up or down so that you can see as far off into the distance as possible in the upper portion of the glass. This will allow the viewing area to extend down to approximately the rear bumper. You should be able to see all the way to the horizon in the upper section of the mirror, allowing us to see vehicles far off in the distance in the top one quarter to one third of the glass. The horizontal or side to side adjustment should be set so that the inside edge of the mirror, that's the side closest to the RV, just skims along the bodywork. If there's an awning on the right side of your rig, you might be seeing the awning arm instead of the paint job. Just make sure that you can see part of the RV in the edge of the mirror, guaranteeing that no one can slip between your view and your rig. This is a correctly adjusted flat mirror with the horizon visible near the top and the awning arm on the side of the RV just visible at the edge of the glass. If we adjust it too high, we're wasting valuable mirror area looking at too much sky. If we adjust it too low, we can't use the mirror for its primary purpose of seeing vehicles in the distance. Adjusting it too far in will again waste valuable mirror real estate, watching the side of the RV. And too far out will open up a blind area alongside our rig. If we can't actually see the side of the RV, it could allow vehicles to approach us unseen. Adjust the right and left flat mirrors exactly the same way, with the horizon visible in the distance up at the top, and the side of the RV just visible at the edge. Now for the convex mirrors. If yours are adjustable, the rule of thumb is to set them as far down and as far out as you can without losing sight of the horizon or the side of the RV, similar to adjusting the flat mirrors. With our rectangular mirrors mounted inside fixed housings, that means setting them as far down and as far out as they'll go. Now that they're adjusted correctly, the flat mirror will view a narrow band, straight back, starting near the rear bumper and off into the distance as far as the eye can see. This allows you to see vehicles approaching from behind, while the convex mirrors will monitor the area alongside the RV. Again, Neither can do the job alone, requiring them to be used together as a team. Let's look at a more vivid demonstration of what each mirror sees. We've launched our solo quadcopter to give us a bird's eye view of a parking lot where we've marked out a standard 12 foot wide lane with small traffic cones alongside our RV. Our car will slowly pass us on the right hand side as we monitor its progress in our mirrors. Before we roll the car, Notice that at about two RV lengths behind us, it's clearly visible in the flat mirror, but only a tiny, barely visible speck in the convex. As the car approaches us from behind, notice how it starts to leave the flat mirror as it begins to exit the narrow field of view. Also notice that it's gradually becoming larger and therefore more visible in the convex mirror. 
You'll recall that the area around the RV's rear bumper is the transition zone from flat to convex. Here, you can see that in action as the car exits one mirror while becoming clearly visible in the other. Let's move our mirror view out of the way so we can see what happens as the car continues to move forward. As it comes alongside the RV, it has completely disappeared from the flat mirror, but is much more clearly visible in the convex. Let's stop the video as the car reaches a crucial transition point. You can see that the back of the car hasn't yet disappeared from the convex mirror, but the hood has already come into view through the windshield. But don't be lulled into a false sense of security just because we never lost sight of the car. Our CRV is larger and taller than many other vehicles. If that had been a small passenger car or motorcycle down there, this is potentially the most dangerous spot it could be in, completely out of sight in the blind spot along our right front corner. There is only one way to deal with that, scanning. A good defensive driver scans their surroundings, including all four mirrors, every five to eight seconds, gathering information, including the progress of other vehicles as they move through your space. If a small car was hidden alongside your right front corner, you'd know because you'd monitored its progress as part of your scan. We'll talk more about scanning and other defensive driving techniques in a future video. For now, let's have our car complete its pass as it comes fully into view through our windshield. To demonstrate all of this in the real world, we've mounted our GoPro high up on the right side at the rear of our RV, looking straight down at the lane to our right. At the same time, We'll watch the right mirrors from the driver's perspective and again, synchronize the video to see exactly where cars are located as they pass through our field of view. A couple of notes worth mentioning. First, we're concentrating on the right side because, by definition, that's our weak side. All of the concepts are the same on the left side of the RV, but since we're sitting so much closer to the left-hand mirrors and have a much better view out the side window, it's much less likely anyone could hide on the left side, no matter what type of vehicle they're driving. Also, we've moved into the third lane of this four-lane highway, even though we're not passing anyone. Normally, we keep right, protecting our weak side. While we're doing this for demonstration purposes, it's also a great reminder of just how readily cars pass large vehicles on the right, with no regard for their limited visibility but that's another defensive driving topic for another time. So let's see in real life exactly how it looks when a car passes us. That's our GoPro view in the upper right-hand corner, looking down from the rear of the RV. In the distance, the blue car is clearly visible in the flat mirror and a speck in the convex. As it approaches the rear of our rig, it transitions from the flat mirror to the convex, where it becomes larger and more visible. Sure enough, as it moves into the area by our rear bumper, it disappears from the flat mirror completely. Let's stop and move our GoPro to the other critical transition point, the right front corner. As a car pulls up alongside, let's freeze the video and notice something really important that we mentioned earlier. Because this car is a little smaller and is hugging the right side of its lane, it's moved out of our convex mirror view, but hasn't yet appeared through the windshield. If we hadn't been practicing the defensive driving technique of scanning our mirrors, we'd never have seen it approaching and would have no idea that it's hiding just feet from our right front corner. Now let's talk about using our mirrors to practice and reinforce good lane position and control. As part of your routine scan, you can note the space between the RV and the lines on the road. It should be about the same on both sides. Notice that both the flat and convex mirrors provide feedback on lane position. This is what drifting off-center looks like, with a larger gap on one side than the other. If you drift far enough to actually cross out of your lane, you'll know because the line on that side will disappear from view completely. Gently correct back to the center of your lane and use it as a learning experience. Don't stare at your mirrors, but use routine scanning as an integral part of good driving habits to gather information 
and build both visual and muscle memory. With regular practice over time, staying in your lane will become as automatic as breathing. We hope this overview of RV mirrors has been helpful. If you have questions or feedback, please leave them in a comment below and we'll do our best to reply. Check out our previous videos here or by clicking the links below. And be sure to visit us at thervgeeks.com for more great RVing content. Thanks for watching and safe travels. Leave tracks on the pavement to show exactly where those tires go as we make the turn. Again, this is with full right lock on the steering wheel for maximum off tracking. Here's the path of the right front tire. And here's the path of the left rear tires.